Hello and welcome to the XRP channel, the crypto channel where we try to bring you the news without the hype. First thing we're going to look at is from the XRP British Bull, which is me. So it's my tweet. And I wrote, one thing people never attack XRP on is the technology. And the best technology will reign supreme. History will show this in time, hot or strong. So you so often see kind of tribalism within the crypto uh, space. You see Bitcoin maxis, Ethereum maxis, Dogecoin maxis, whoever the maxis that to be, uh, they always attack XRP just going, ah, oh, it's rubbish because the price hasn't done anything. But the one thing they really never go after is the technology behind XRP and the XRP ledger. Whereas whenever we kind of fight back as the XRP community and we say, well, you know, Bitcoin's got a lot of problems with it and you can actually look at the technology. And I think in the long term of this space, it just seems reasonable common sense that the best technologies are going to win. I think what we've seen with kind of the SEC and big powerful people kind of giving Ethereum a free pass, Bitcoin a free pass and trying to suppress XRP and ripple the company is because the technology is very powerful, it's very strong, and it's a very big threat to uh, certain groups of people. Whereas on a level playing field, I do not think they can match the technology of XRP and XRPL. So, you know, when you look at things like Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the energy usage is that of a country like Austria. These are not my words. This is from a speech which you can find on the Bank of International Settlements website. Uh, what fascinates me with these organizations is they're fully aware of the pros and cons of these cryptocurrencies. And they've known for years and years, because you can see from the um, from the debates that they've been having, because it's all it's all written down on their website. You can literally go to the speeches that they've done and they talk about the problems with uh, Bitcoin and transactions per second and the cost of moving uh, Bitcoin around. You also have the same with Ethereum, uh, cost of moving Ethereum around, etc. I tweeted out a little while ago that the technology is a little bit shit um, compared to what is there now. And there are uh, kind of blockchain technologies, uh, cryptocurrencies out there that are even better than XRP, but I think it gets to a point where companies will have to choose and use uh, this technology for things like cross-border payments and XRP and what Ripple has been doing, I think, are the, the grown-ups in the room. And I think the technology is as good as it ever needs to be. And with David Schwartz kind of always doing clever stuff with the XRP ledger, uh, the fact that he's one of the cleverest cryptographers on planet Earth is fantastic to have him as part of Ripple. Um, so, yeah, the technology never really gets bashed when it comes to XRPL because... It just works. It does what it says. Uh, it's been tested. It's been tested and it's been tested. So we had the whole MoneyGram deal and things like that where this technology has been tested. So I'm very hopeful for the future. I think long term, uh, the, su the supreme sort of technology is going to reign supreme. The best technology will reign supreme rather. And, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. I think we're going to see a um, a what's the word? A, we're going to see a bull run, but it's not going to be um, people actually using it. It's uh, the term is uh, leaving my mind. We're not going to see a utility bull run quite yet. We're basically going to see a kind of a hype bull run. It's not the word. It will come to me. A speculative bull run. That's the word. So I think in time when we actually see the utility bull runs or just the price, these uh, cryptocurrencies, it just makes common sense that over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, these cryptocurrencies are going to stand alone and they're going to function alone and the prices will go up and down on their own merits. At the moment, we have crypto that's just all kind of hashed together and mainstream media does a great job of always just talking about crypto, crypto, this is it. You know, it's just one big group. They're all the same. But these are so very, very different that I think a company like Ripple and XRP holders will do extremely well in the long term because we have one of the best technologies out there. It works, it's been tested, and we have a fantastic company that is constantly pushing the use case uh, of XRP around the world. Okay, I'll try and get through reading these. I've just had an eye operation, so one of my eyes isn't really uh, seeing very well at the moment. Ripple Van Winkle, crypto researcher. Let me sum this up. The USA is so far behind crypto that the US banks are not comfortable giving, going live just yet with XRP. Expansion everywhere else. The US will be the last for XRP usage. 
Okay, this is in uh, regards to a video from Brad Garlinghouse, which I will play now. Years, and there's an open dialogue, there's a constructive dialogue. The U.S. used to be looked at as a leader from securities regulation and protecting consumers. I think it's become a political liability. The, the way the SEC has approached this in the United States, we are looked at here in the U.S. relative to other countries as stuck. You know, just we, we are not leading, and even worse, it's just kind of looked at. The, the other countries are absolutely leading. The U.K. I mean, I happen to be going to the UAE later today, but. Uh, I could name five or six countries, Japan, even Australia, uh, Switzerland, Singapore. I mean, these are all countries that are leading. And by virtue of that, you're seeing capital investment. You're seeing entrepreneurs set up shop in those countries because the rules are clear. I want to come back to that rest of the world versus the U.S. point, but just to clarify something quickly, because you just said you'll take it to the Supreme Court if you have to. Sure. You will ride this out, fight it in the court until it is done if the SEC appeals. There's no chance that you would end up settling in some way. Well, that's a slightly different question. I mean, look, uh, look I, I, we've talked a little bit about this publicly now. I, I was offered the ability to settle prior to, to, you know, they didn't just sue Ripple, they sued me. Yes. And they, they sued dropped that now, right? And that has all been uh, all dropped with prejudice. And so, you know, look, that feels really good. Asterisk, it feels like, how did we end up here? Like, what you sued me as if it was clear I had to knowingly sell, know that XRP is a security and act recklessly to not know, and people here know, well, uh, know more about society. But, like, there was no chance they were going to win that. And pushing it the way they did, it just feels like the SEC should be part of the solution. Other countries, it's no problem. And you joke, I mean, I think you were joking in my meeting with the SEC today. <laughs> in another country, that wouldn't. I've met with central banks, I've met with, uh, you name the regulator, and it's kind of like, yeah, no problem. Uh, a, a open meeting, open dialogue, we talk about what Ripple's doing, we talk about our view on the crypto industry, no problem. Here in the U.S., it's like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, the laws are clear, but yet we can't answer is ETH a security. Yeah, that's something that the chairman is still not actually uh, I, I expressing an opinion today, on. I don't know if you're today, but today. Maybe I'll find it behind the curtain somewhere. I'll let you know. Um, okay, so let's go back to the U.S. and the rest of the world topic, as you were just discussing it there. Where do you think the best example is being set? What should the U.S. be trying to replicate? Or does the U.S. just need to be doing something different, but taking that regulatory, regulatory approach differently? I, like, I, I Partly because they're you know, a close economic just to pause the video, uh, video for kind of a note from my personal observations of the world, it does seem that America is stuck on so many levels where you've just got kind of two political uh, sides and <clears throat> one side's doing one thing, the other side's doing the other thing, and there's no kind of agreement as how the country moves forward. It's literally just one side constantly attacking the other side, which makes them stuck, exactly like Brad Garlinghouse. I thought it was funny when he was talking about how there's clear regulations around the world. He said, you've got the UK, you've got Japan. And he said, and even Australia. <laughs> um, OK, we will continue the video. And political partners in the US, I, the United Kingdom. The UK, I think, has been very constructive on crypto. And that, uh, you know, when I say that, it, they're not... You know, again, Chair Genzo likes to talk about crypto as the Wild West. It is absolutely not the Wild West. Uh, you know, Ripple is a regulated company in many jurisdictions around the world. Uh, you can see the Singap in Singapore, we have our uh, license from MAS as a major payments provider. Uh, in the UK, we have... And that was absolutely fantastic news, that Singapore license uh, agreement. Well, in, in Dubai, we've applied for the Virtual Asset Regulatory in BARA. I can't remember the A stands for it. But, you know, it's not the Wild West, and I think it's, it's a narrative to promote, I guess, a political agenda as opposed to sound policy. And, uh, you know, I think there's still time for the U.S. to remain a key leader in this space, and some of the most important crypto companies in the world are based here in the United States. But, uh, you know, if, you, if Brian Armstrong were up here today, I think he would say as well, you know, maybe, does he wish he had gone public in a different jurisdiction in the United States? And the SEC approved his S1, but then sued him for doing things they knew he was doing. How does that make sense? Okay, so you just said you think there is still time for the U.S. to be a leader. How much time is still time? Yeah. Like, where in the hourglass are we? Well, I, I mean, look, I want to be realistic about this. The United States... 
I think what's really good about this fintech week is she's actually asking him questions that we all are kind of wondering. This is what 23% of global GDP. If the, if the U.S. gets its act together years from now, it probably it's such an important economic actor that it, it feels like that option always exists because of where, of where the U.S. stands in a global GDP per point of view. And it was really the, the finance capital of the world. But there are other finance capitals of the world. And certainly Dubai is you know, trying to emerge even more so. Singapore, for sure. London, for sure. And not surprisingly, I, you know, I've said publicly, 80% of Ripple's hiring this year will be outside the United States. And it's partly, why would I want to hire more and more people in the United States when the U.S. is making it hostile for me to operate here? And even with the SEC case, I mean, we have U.S. banks as customers. And, it, you know, I've talked to them post the SEC case. And I say, you know, okay, so great. Now we can, we have a product called on-demand liquidity, which uses XRP. And so I'll go to those banks and say, hey, could, you know, could we engage on that topic? And they're like, look, even though you won the case, the United States government is still hostile towards crypto. The OCC is hostile towards crypto. And until that changes, the banks of the United States are not going to engage meaningfully. So I don't think the window has passed for the US to be a leader, but I think uh, every day that goes by, these other markets, they want the entrepreneurs there. They want growth. Okay, so I thought that was kind of really interesting stuff. I will bookmark this video uh, if you wanna watch this video. Again, I've cut it very, very slightly short, but it's kind of interesting how he talks about how even if, even though they have legal clarity, us in the XRP community have constantly, constantly been asking the questions as to why will the banks not use it? Well, this is the man himself who is actually talking in person to the banks, saying until there's clear regulations in America, the banks just aren't going to use this technology. And unfortunately, with the kind of the way they've done it at the moment, Bitcoin and Ethereum seem to have a free pass. So you're seeing more and more BlackRock wanting a spot Bitcoin ETF, etc. They're looking at uh, doing the same with Ethereum, etc. I think institutions are able probably to use those two more free, freely than something like XRP, even though XRP does what it's supposed to do. And I kind of think that's the point of what Gary Gensler is doing. He's bringing these narratives of crypto is the wild west he's stopping the innovation because the more he digs his heels in the more bitcoin and ethereum have a free pass and we just need to see the conflicts of interest from the previous uh, heads of the sec you know bill henman had 15 million reasons uh, to support ethereum so many other people had reasons that they were making money from bitcoin and ethereum is Gary Gensler any different well he seems to be pushing the same agenda so i do think they're in this kind of game of just allowing those to the free pass and holding everything back for as long as possible and they will keep waging this war on crypto until crypto until congress actually comes in and does something about it but the problem is congress never actually does anything they just say they're going to do something and no actions are actually taken so i don't know whether we'll have to wait until the next elections in america to see whether you have new leadership and new decisions on this space but it is very very frustrating and i think this is kind of why as I know, the promise of XRP has been held back and damaged uh, incredibly. I think the SEC lawsuit and what Gary Gensler is doing in America as a whole has hurt so many cryptocurrencies and crypto innovation as, uh, in, and has given a free pass to Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think the damage is untold, but I think the cat is out of the bag as, uh, of, as to what's happened. And, I, you know, the fact that he can't, he's now having to have these conversations of, Gary Gensler is having to have these conversations and is asked questions of, is Ethereum a security? And he refuses to answer that question. So he's kind of now clouded Ethereum as well. So really the only one that has the free pass is Bitcoin. I think he's doing this on purpose. I think there's a very clear kind of cut reason why he's doing this. I don't think he's going to change stance anytime soon until he's, he leaves, until he gets fired. I think he's there to do exactly the job he's going to do. And... I think he's doing that job very, very well. I think people think he's incompetent. I think someone like him with his background at working at MIT, being one of the youngest traders at top level banks, I think he is probably extremely good at whatever job you give him to do. I think he's an extremely intelligent individual. And I don't particularly like him, um, but I think he's doing yeah the job job that he was put there to do, unfortunately for us. But but 
again, I think the all of these kind of you've got fintech fintech week you've got swell you've got fintech that is being co-hosted by the bank of international settlements the bigger organization the biggest organizations in the world are now part and realizing this kind of crypto revolution that's happening i think uh, gary gensher is losing support from everybody who's anybody anybody who's important and i think it's only that i think the tides are turning I think the tides are turning and I think when the tides turn, that's when we're going to see the most amazing stuff for Ripple. That will be when we actually see utility bull runs as opposed to speculation bull runs. Okay, watch your guru just in $9 trillion asset manager BlackRock officially files to spot Ethereum ETF with NASDAQ. So like I said before, they want Bitcoin, they want Ethereum. Uh, will they let the others through the door? I think they don't want the others through the door, but I think the others are coming uh, through the back door, so to speak. Crypto saving expert, uh, BlackRock uh, spot, BlackRock spot ETF, uh, Ethereum ETF has been confirmed in their Nasdaq filing. Okay, so someone else is just saying that. Okay, XRPnews.crypto says, it's a mystery to me how you can invest in such a crap coin that causes such high transactions costs. And he's talking about Ethereum. These are my agreements as well. There is a reason why they need to be given a free pass because they don't work anywhere near as well. And as soon as people are given the free choice of which ones you want to use uh, and how are you going to use this to be competitive against your competitors, there's kind of a clear choice in this space, depending what you're trying to do with blockchain. If you're looking at patents, then uh, patents, you're obviously going to go for something like Casper. But if you're looking at cross-border payments, moving money around, looking at your Nostro Vostra accounts, there's really only one cryptocurrency out there that's uh, a really kind of sensible professional choice with a professional company behind them, and that is XRP. I think Gary Gensler is in the losing battle. Uh, I think he has damaged us big time, which is why I dislike him so much, because it's just not honest what he's doing. Um, and this is kind of... One of my points where I put out a tweet saying, which wealth mentors do you follow? The favorite person I follow is a guy called Jim Ron, who is no longer with us, but he was one of the most fantastic mentors ever and uh, wealth kind of gurus. And he actually mentored Tony Robbins. And if you listen to Tony Robbins, you'll see many of the same phrases that he's kind of stolen from uh, Jim Ron. But Jim Ron's kind of point of success is the one thing you really need to make sure when you are successful is to guard and make sure that you protect your value system, your integrity and your honesty. Because otherwise, if you come out with lots of money and you let go of those things, then what do you have? You have nothing. You become a shell of a person with a big bank account and you've kind of lost that. I mean, no one looks at you as someone with integrity because they know that you will sell out just to just to get the money, which is why I like someone like Jim Rohn. If you have a personal favorite wealth kind of mentor, Please leave it in the comments. I would genuinely be interested in reading who they are and researching who they are. But yeah, from my perspective, Jim Ron, he seemed like a gentleman. He also was just, was just a funny guy without almost trying to be funny. He was just a character that you just don't get anymore. All the kind of high profile people, in my mind, I don't particularly enjoy a lot of them. I find them just overly aggressive. Most of them are kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's just a generational difference. Okay, last thing I'm going to put on is Jeremy Hogan. This will be interesting as nothing less is at stake than the sovereign rights of foreign countries. The US Supreme Court says that Ripple sales must have been in the US or at least on a US exchange. How is the SEC going, uh, expert going to get around that? And he basically cites a legal case, which I have reposted if you want to see it. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think the... Uh, SEC particularly thought they were going to win if I really think about it and when you listen to things like Brad Garlinghouse for staying on stage where he says it's just almost ludicrous what the SEC was claiming in regards to how he should have known Brad Garlinghouse etc should have known that what they were doing was illegal etc even though the courts have just ruled it wasn't XRP is not a, um, a security on the secondary market there's still a bit of a court case to do but I don't particularly think the SEC cared that much whether or not they won or lost. I think, you know, if they had won, it would have made them all powerful. But I kind of think that they've done the job that they were put there to do. And that is Bitcoin and Ethereum a free pass. Everyone else just gets pushed to the side and attacked and attacked with taxpayers' money. And that's why when Brad Garlinghouse is on stage, he's, he points out how this state, how this 
space has been politicized and i think that's exactly right i'm not sure it's so much politicized as poor kind of shady and possibly arguably many will say corrupt but i will leave you to think of your own opinions on this on this channel we just try and bring you the news and let you kind of come up with your own conclusions thank you very much for listening if you like the video please hit the like button it really does help push this video out to other people if you're new to the channel then please subscribe and remember this is just for entertainment it is not financial advice thank you for listening